Restart. 25. There's something important you have to see. I stare at Brennan's text on my phone. What's this big deal he needs to show me? Probably nothing. Chances are, he really is just trying to rope me into helping with a new YouTube video, although he says that's not it. I don't care. The fact that he texted me at all is something. I haven't heard a peep from any of the video club kids since that day in the music room. Who can blame them? They all heard how I lied about the electrical fire, and they don't even know about the really bad thing I did. To be honest, I'd give anything to be part of one of Brendan's goofball videos again. They're always hilarious, and I could use a good laugh about right now. I can't remember the last time I laughed. Nothing has been funny lately, and the most unfunny part is what I just found out about myself. Yeah, Aaron and Bear are jerks, my dad's pushy, and the video club has turned on me. But I'm worse than all of them. I'm a criminal, and the fact that I don't remember it doesn't change what I did. How could I do such a thing? It's a question that doesn't need answering. I didn't do it. The old me did. And it's no mystery that the old me was capable of some pretty awful stuff. I stole Mr. Solway's Medal of Honor from his room at Portland Street. One sleazy act of many, courtesy of Chase, Aaron, and Bear. I have no idea what I plan to do with it. Sell it, probably, and split the money with my two accomplices. That little plan went sour when I stashed it somewhere and then went and got amnesia and couldn't remember my hiding place. No wonder Aaron and Bear were so suspicious of me. They thought I was holding out on them so I could keep the profit for myself. And the worst part is that I can't even give the medal back to Mr. Solway because I have absolutely no idea what I did with it, and I don't know how to find out. Maybe it'll come back to me in bits and pieces, like some of my past. But when? It could take years. What if Mr. Solway dies in the meantime? How will I ever make it right? It's funny. The idea of going back to Brendan's house stings, even though I've only been there once before. When I had the accident, I never longed for my old life because I couldn't remember it. But my new old life, video club, and my new friends, losing that hurts a lot. Since this time, I know what I'm missing. And it hurts twice as much because of how quick those guys were to turn against me. Maybe that means we were never really friends, even though I thought we were. My partnership with Shoshana certainly felt that way. When the two of us were working side by side, interviewing Mr. Solway and editing Wire, I was positive that we were creating something amazing together. All the kids in video club were finally starting to trust me. Even Joel was kind of warming up to me. Or so I thought. I must have been nuts. In the end, that's why I decided to go to Brendan's. If he's reaching out to me, then it's a good thing. I leave the house and step into a beehive of activity. Boxes and furniture are scattered all over the lawn next door. Four big guys are loading everything into a moving truck. That's right, the Tottenhams are moving today. Supposedly, they're really nice neighbors who were great to Johnny and me growing up. Mom is sad that they're moving. I have no clue, of course. When you've got amnesia, it's hard enough to relearn the important people in your life. You tend to lose the crowd on the fringes. I'm cutting across the grass in the direction of Brendan's when two of the movers step out of the front door carrying a large framed painting. I gasp and for a second forget to breathe. It's her. The little girl in the blue dress trimmed in white lace. My only memory that stuck with me through the accident. I think about the hours I spent agonizing over that image. Where it came from and whether I might have hallucinated the whole thing. But no, here she is. The same red ribbon in her blonde hair. I see details that aren't in my memory. Like she's standing in a garden surrounded by flowers and there's a little watering can in her hand. I didn't imagine her at all. I remembered her from the painting in my neighbor's house. I run over to Mrs. Tottenham, who is wringing her hands over the carton marked, Super Fragile. That painting, I explained my voice hoarse. Did you ever show it to me? Oh, hello, Chase, she chuckles. <laughs> That's just a reproduction, of course. 
an original Renoir would be worth tens of millions of dollars. Yeah, okay, I said breathlessly, but why do I know it? Did I ever see it at your place? I don't think so, dear, she tells me. It was hanging in the upstairs solarium. I follow her pointing finger to the glassed-in sunroom on the second floor of the house. So I didn't see it. But I did? How else could it be the only image to make the trip through my shattered memory? My eyes travel from the Tottenham home to ours next door. Could I have looked inside their solarium from our upstairs windows? No way. The entrance to our house is around the corner facing away from theirs. Our dormer is in the front. That sunroom faces nothing but a chimney and some sloped shingles. The only way to see that painting from our place would be to climb to the top of our roof and peer over the peak down into the huge glass window. And suddenly, I just know. I run back inside, tear up the stairs to my bedroom, and step out onto the perch that was so much a part of my old life. I start to climb, my rubber-soled sneakers clinging to the rough shingles. The dormer, which houses my room, is beside me, but that leaves a sloped path about three feet wide leading straight up to the top. As comfortable as I am on the section of roof right outside my window, the steep slog to the peak is another ball game. The grade is sharp, and the higher I go, the clearer the image of exactly what must have happened over the summer becomes, and how far I must have fallen. The ground seems so distant, it should be in another zip code. I'm amazed I didn't dash my brains out on the grass. I get on my hands and knees, and my ascent comes a crawl. I feel a little more secure this way, especially as I near the apex, where I can use my right arm to cling to the dormer. I'm pretty scared, but I'm even more determined to get up there. For me to remember the little girl in blue, she must have been the last thing I saw before the accident. That makes sense, since the roof is the only place I could have seen her from. I can't explain it, but I'm positive the key to what happened. I'm positive the key to what happened to me lies a few feet ahead. I stretch out my arm, get a grip on the top of the A-frame, and haul myself up to gaze down at the Tottenham's house. There it is, floor-to-ceiling window of the sunroom. (coughs) I can even make out the large, faded rectangle on the wall, where the picture must have hung. Okay, I think, this is where I was when I fell. But it still doesn't answer the big question. Why did I come up here? Was I spying on the Tottenham's in their sunroom? I was rotten enough. But why would I care what they were doing? Besides, according to Mom, we were friends. I could have just knocked on their door. Why bother to climb halfway to the moon? Frustration wells up in me, mingling with my disappointment. So the little girl in the blue dress tells me where I fell from, but that's it. As I inch my way back from the peak, I extend my right arm, steadying myself against the cedar shakes on the side of the dormer. No sense in repeating my swan dive off the roof, although it's no more than I deserve. I almost slip as one of the shakes pulls away. A terrified gasp escapes me as I slide a little before stopping my descent with my feet. I hang on like a fly to the wall, while the racing of my pulse returns to normal. That's when I catch a glimpse of the blue behind the dull brown of the loose shake. There's something back there, (coughs) wedged in behind the loose wood. I know what it is even before I reach for it. My hand closes on the silky blue ribbon, and as I draw it out, I feel the weight of the military decoration attached to it. The gold, five-pointed star catches briefly on some insulation. And there it is, Mr. Solway's Medal of Honor, stolen, hidden, forgotten, and discovered again. Then, as if finding the medal has unclogged a drain, the memory of my accident pours back into me. It starts at the apex of the roof. 
with me gloating over the brilliance of my hiding place while peering down through the sunroom window at Mr. Tottenham next door. He's in the lotus position on the floor, performing awkward yoga in front of the painting of the girl in blue. That's what does me in. The hilarious sight of my overweight neighbor twisted into a pretzel looking like a giant mutant lemon in a skin-tight fluorescent yellow workout suit. I let go for just a second, reaching for my phone to get a picture of this one-man comedy routine. And the next thing I know, I'm sliding down the roof, the rectangular pattern of the shingles becoming a blur as I pick up speed. I claw madly at the slope, desperate for a handhold, a foothold, anything to stop my descent. It's no use. My momentum is too much, and I'm falling. When I hit the eaves, I flip over a little, giving me a terrifying view of the yard as it screams up to meet me. I know dizzying acceleration and... I brace for impact, but the memory ends there. I don't have to hit the ground a second time. So that's how it happened. The mishap that turned my entire life upside down and almost killed me. Serves me right for snooping on poor Mr. Tottenham. How is it any business of mine if he wants to do yoga in form-fitting spandex? But that was the old chase. Everything was his business because he said it was. What was I planning to do with that picture I'd managed to get if if I'd managed to get the phone out of my pocket? Show Aaron and Bear and the football team? Post it on Facebook? Print up fifty copies and plaster them all over town? I sigh. Who knows why that chase did what he did? I should probably just be grateful I don't have to be him anymore. The metal clutched tightly in my palm. I climbed down gingerly, careful to keep both hands and feet on the roof at all times. My mind is whirling. Brendan's house will just have to wait. Nothing there can be as important as returning this to the rightful owner. I have to see Mr. Solway. Near the eaves, I slide my butt to my window and throw my leg over the sill. Chase? Uh-oh, Mom. You promised you wouldn't go out on the roof ever again. Do I have to nail your window shut? I just blow past her. Sorry, Mom, I toss over my shoulder. Gotta get to Portland Street. I'm not finished yelling at you yet. Have you forgotten what happened to you last summer? Do you have an amnesia about the amnesia? I ran down the stairs calling. I'll explain later. In the kitchen, I snatch a soft dish towel off the drying rack and wrap it around the metal. I jam it in my pocket and I blast out the door.